The seller of this Xbox Series X said that they were ripped off by a professional repair company, so after they got it back, they tried to fix it themselves, and now I have it. The seller said that there were 10 missing pads on the HDMI port, and the HDMI port needed to be replaced. He said that he paid the shop an expedited fee to get his work done a little faster, but all they did was keep him waiting, eventually stole his money, told him his console was unfixable, stole the retimer chip off of the board, and then sent it back. The seller did say that they did fix the missing pads, but it still needs the HDMI port and the retimer chip. I'm telling you what the seller told me. I don't have the other side of the story, so I don't know what the repair shop would say. I do try to verify these stories as much as possible, but obviously I'm still only getting one side of the story. I'm not sure what I'm getting into or if I'll even be able to fix it. And now we can reveal the bottom board and have a look at this HDMI port. So far, things aren't looking too crazy. This uh, viscous thermal paste isn't doing what it needs to do. It's actually kind of dry. Usually it's a little moist, but that's definitely dry. Um, let's get this X clamp off, and then let's take a look at this HDMI port. I also want to look at the bottom part of the board and see if there's anything going on there we need to address. Let's see if they put in the perfect amount of thermal paste. Of course they didn't. There's not any thermal paste even here. Now that's probably the seller that I bought it from because I know they worked on it after it got back from the repair shop and he probably had it apart and just kind of threw it together when I bought it from him. So I don't think that he just didn't have thermal paste on here when he was trying to uh, get it working. Now let's have a look at the HDMI port and the retimer chip. Obviously the retimer chip is missing and the port itself, it's had a lot of work done on these traces back here. Let's get under a microscope and check those out. So this is what we have to work with. We've got a bunch of traces that were sort of fixed. That These do not look amazing, but I mean, they don't have to look amazing, they just have to work. The port is actually soldered on okay, seemingly. But what I need to do is go through and clean this out a little bit. It's got a bunch of flux residue in here. And I just can't really tell what's connected and what's not in here. So I'm going to get this cleaned up first and then take another look at it. Okay, so this is what we have to work with. And honestly, like, like I said, it doesn't look amazing, but it looks like all the work has been done that needs to be done for this. Um, I'm like, all of these are nice and tight. So the solder work has been done and it looks like it has been done in such a way that everything's connected. I think, well, maybe not that one. What I'm going to do is get out my multimeter and test these connections and make sure everything's connected. That one definitely is not. And that one is questionable. That, okay, well, several of these need to be resoldered. This one doesn't look amazing, but I think it actually is connected. Okay, so several of these do need to be resoldered. I'm going to go through and resolder the ones that need to be soldered. And then we'll go through and check it with the multimeter and make sure they all have a good connection. Now I got a little bit too much solder on that one, so I'm gonna come through. There we go. Soak some of that up with my large iron. And come through, back through with my small one and there we go, that's better.
And I'm just going through and touching up each one of these just because while I'm here, we might as well make sure they each have plenty of solder and that they're a really good joint. Okay. So I think that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna get my multimeter out and then just test each of those joints and just to double check and make sure that they're good. Uh, let's clean them up a little bit first, just with a Q-tip and some IPA. Get all that excess flux out of there, or at least as much as we can. Sometimes hard to get it all, but it's important to get as much flux out as you can because this can flow into the port itself and then kind of gunk up the HDMI cable and then your HDMI cable won't work and won't display on the TV correctly. It's just a mess. So got to make sure this is all nice and clean. Okay, that looks decent. So I'm going to go through and test each of these joints. You should hear a beep when there is a connection and we are looking for a beep. So I'm going to touch one end of my probe over here and one over here. And that tells me that that connection is good. So here and here, good. Here and here. Uh, we need a better test point here. Okay, that one's good. Here and here. Good. 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 Okay, so we got good joints on all of these. There's a couple of these that I'm gonna test off camera. I can't really show the whole thing because I can't zoom out enough while still getting close enough to see what's going on. So I'm gonna test a couple of these off camera, but all of them so far look great. So the next thing we need to worry about is this. And just looking at this, it all looks actually pretty good. I am gonna wick away some of this excess solder right here because if you have too much solder on here, that can cause the chip to kind of like lift up a little bit and not settle down on these pads. So we need to make sure there's not too much solder on this. But other than that, this looks pretty good. So let's do that now. Add a bunch of flux. because We're gonna need flux on here anyway, and this will just help the solder flow and flow onto the, onto the solder wick. There we go. That looks pretty good. Fume extractor on, solder wick acquired, and here we go. That got some of it. It's actually pretty difficult to do this because this is a large ground pad right here. So it's gotta get really, really hot in order to really soak this solder up onto the wick. I think we're getting it, maybe, hopefully. Oh yeah, we're getting it. Okay, that's not too bad. Now we just need to prep this chip. Soaked it in that flux nicely. So now I'm just going to come through with some solder on my iron. And I'm just going to put a little bit of solder on each of those pads. It's called tinning the chip, tinning the pads. That'll just help it stick to the board once I get ready to install it. There we go. I usually don't do the tinning the pads right on the board like this, but I'm all set up with my micro microscope already. So that's just easier for now. Okay, and there we go. It's looking pretty good. Now I'm just gonna flip it over if I can get a good grip on it. It's stuck down to this flux pretty good. All right, and then there's the number one pad, and that should go down like this. 
this board actually isn't marked really at all, surprisingly. But down here, there's normally a, a little dot that indicates that's where the number one pad goes. Now that that's approximately in place, I'm gonna start up my hot air soldering station. And then once the air is warm, I'll bring it over and solder this down to the board. Now my wand's gotta be really hot for this, so I have mine on 1100 and the airflow I think is at three. This can be pretty tough to get into place. But once it's there, it kind of floats into place and then you're pretty good to go. I'm going to add some flux and then reheat it again just to make sure it's right where it needs to be. And looking at it right now, I feel like it needs to move over this way a little bit. So I am gonna reheat it so I can get that moved over there. This needs to be just in right, the exact right position. too far. Actually, that looks pretty good. Let's see how that's looking. Okay, that's actually right on. Let's check the other plane. That is also right on. So I just went through with my iron and just re-soldered each of these joints right here to make sure that there was good contact between the pad on the chip and the pad on the board. Then I noticed we had a little problem over here with this guy. Need to see if I can melt the solder so I can push it down. Oh, there we go. Come on. Come on, there we go. Now, it's always interesting trying to get your tweezers situated just right for these guys. Okay. Nope. Might need to use my hot air on this. Okay, let's get some extra solder on my iron. Try this again. There we go. Ah, ha, ha. I thought it was soldered all the way. Clearly it was not. Okay. Let's redo these pads. Get the excess solder off. This stuff really is easier to do with a hot air wand. I'm not sure why I'm sitting here doing this with my micro pencil, but I guess I just don't want to wait for my hot air station to heat up. I probably should do it anyway, but we're going to do it the hard way. Okay. There we go. 
Now, well, let's try this again. There's that side. And then. Doesn't want to take on that side because that's a big ground plane. So I'm going to come over, do some left handed soldering. See if we can get this just in the right position. Get a little more heat down there. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, also looking at this, it looks like this pad right here has very little to no solder. So let's fix that real quick. There we go. Okay, all the rest of those look good. Let's do a little cleanup. Okay, not bad. Let's see if this thing will turn on and work. But of course, first we have to apply the perfect amount of thermal paste. And there we go. Oh, and I do know we do need to deal with this viscous thermal paste, but we'll do that later. I wanna see if this thing works. Okay, it's all back together. Let's plug it in to see if it powers on and then if it shows anything up on the screen. Okay, it's all plugged in. Disk drive makes noise. Let's see what the power button does. Good, it does light up. Black screen, come on. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. We already got a picture. So it looks like this is fixed. Um, it looks like we're only at 480p. So I gotta take a look at that. It's actually fairly common for this to happen when you do work on the HDMI system on these. So I'm gonna go into settings and just change the resolution and then we should be good to go. Okay, we're just gonna go up to 1440p, keep. And there we go, this Xbox Series X is all fixed. I'm not sure why the repair shop said that this Xbox Series X was not fixable, but clearly it was. And honestly, it wasn't really that hard of a job for someone that's got a little bit of experience. Thanks so much for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.